Okay, so this is the lesson for um, day 55, uh, light, uh, signed on Tuesday, due on Friday. Um, I posted a little earlier today the um, video of the notes, if you find that helpful to read them along with me. But I want to be sure you do know details that are in the notes and not just uh, the assignments. Okay, let's go over a couple things here, a couple formulas. These were in the notes. This one is the wave speed equation for light. C is not a, a variable, it's a constant. It's the speed of light, it's this number right here, approximately three times 10 to the eight <coughs> meters per second. Lambda is the wavelength. We're gonna talk about what that is in a moment. And nu, it looks like a kind of a combination of a V and a U, is the frequency. So wavelength times frequency equals speed. Since these have to equal a constant, that is three times 10 to the eighth. Then as one of them goes up, the other goes down. As you get a longer wavelength, a larger wavelength, the frequency gets less. If you get a um, higher frequency, the wavelength gets shorter, it gets less. Um, this is just simply the same two equations transposed. You should know how to do the algebra to do that. Um, um, this I actually borrowed this worksheet from a colleague, so you really shouldn't have to be given these two. Just give this one and you should be able to know how to solve for new and for um, lambda. Um, e, now this is the energy of a single photon. And I wrote that on the notes, but I'm gonna write it again here. A photon is a packet of energy. So whereas we often talk, talk about light as being a wave, that is one of these wavy things that can go on for a long time, forever almost, not, not forever, but for a long time. Um, this is actually like a little ball of energy um, and it's called a photon. So the energy in one photon equals the frequency, that's new, times something called Planck's constant. And there's Planck's constant. You're gonna do enough of these problems that that number, you should have that number memorized by the time. Not, not because you have to memorize it, um, but just because you'll use it so many times. And then you can combine this equation and this equation. If you solve this for new, as they did right there, so it's C over lambda, and then you take this equation, you substitute C over lambda for new right there, you get H C over lambda. So what this does is this relates the frequency of a wave with the amount of energy in one photon of light from that wave. And this relates the wavelength of the wave uh, to one, the energy in one photon of light. Okay. So first is just kind of a primer on waves. It's something that you may have seen something similar to this in physics. Um, so here, what you have to understand is what you're looking at here. It's a, it's kind of a before and after picture. So you start your stopwatch at zero seconds. You're standing right here at point A. You're looking down on a crest of a wave. And we're going to call that crest number zero. And that wave has four crests. So it has five actually. One, it has this one, and then it has a, one there, two there, three there, and four there. Okay. Two seconds later, crest four has moved over directly below where you're standing at point A. So there it is right there. So this is the after picture. After two seconds, this wave has moved to the right and there's crest four has moved over. So it's directly beneath you. So the questions are gonna be based on, on that relationship there. Okay, so I'm not gonna write these out. I want you to do everything on line paper and I want you to skip a line between questions. I want you to get used to writing your answers out neatly on line paper because that's the way you're gonna to have to do it on the AP exam. All right, so use the diagram above to answer the following. What is the cycle of a wave? So a cycle, and if you saw the notes, this, this is all, I, I really want you to get this from the notes. Um, but a cycle is basically one movement, one complete movement of the wave. So if you started at crest zero and went down and back up to crest one, or really what's happening is you're standing here at point A, the wave's moving to the right. And what's happened is what you, what you simply see if you were looking straight down on the wave is you'd simply see this wave going down, wave coming back up. That's what you'd see. You wouldn't see this curvature to it. You just see down, back up. And that would be one cycle of the wave. It went from the top of one crest to the top of the next. So that's the cycle of a wave. What's a wavelength? The wavelength is the distance from one crest to the next. So they seem like they're the same thing. They start at the same place uh, and end at the same place, both a cycle and a wavelength. But this wavelength is a straight line distance in meters or micrometers or nanometers or some unit of distance uh, of meters. And it's the straight line distance between one crest to another. It could be, however, from any point on the wave to the identical point over there on the next wave over. So it could be that. 
that distance and this distance are exactly the same. So that would be one wavelength. Okay, what are the crest and the trough? I probably should ask that first. The crest is the top of the wave and the trough is the bottom of the wave. We hardly ever use the word trough, but crest is, is frequently used, so you'll hear that word, okay? So you're writing these out in complete sentences on line paper. What you can do though is jot down the answers on this sheet real quickly, um, but um, go ahead and, and um, and uh, write complete sentence answers on line paper. What is the amplitude of a wave? Amplitude of a wave is the height of the wave. And it's the height not from the bottom, not from the trough all the way up to the, to the crest. It's from this center line, this median line right here. It's from there up to the crest. That's considered the amplitude right there. We can write it over here, if you, just so you see a little clearly. This is the amplitude. It's basically the height of the wave, but it's really the height of half the wave or half the height of the wave you want to look at it. It would also be from this line down to the trough. That should be exactly the same distance um, right there, but it's the amplitude. So it's from there. Okay, so that's the amplitude of the wave. And actually I drew that a little high. It should be even with this, okay? So right there, that's the, um, that's the amplitude of the wave right there. Okay, next up is how many cycles from crest one to crest four? So you want to be sure you count correctly. So there's one and there's four. And the mistake some students make is they say there's one, two, three, four. But that's not correct. That's not a cycle. Those are crests, but those aren't cycles. Here's the cycle. One, two, three. So there's three cycles from crest one to crest four. Uh, number five, how many, uh, number six, um, if the distance from crest zero to four is 12 meters, what is the distance of one wavelength? So it's just a simple division. So if this is 12 from here down to here, that distance is 12. Then you have one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths, four wavelengths. So 12 divided by four. So each wavelength would be three meters long. Okay, three, six, nine would get you to 12 by the time you got to number four. Um, seven, at time t equals zero, crest zero is below you at point A. Two seconds later, crest four is below you at point A. That's what the picture is showing. That's what the diagram is showing. What is the frequency of the wave? So frequency is divine, defined as, and again, this is in the notes. That's why I'm not writing it out for you. I want you to read the notes. Frequency is cycles per second. So if, if crest four moved from here over to there, as you see down here, it did. Then it went one, two, three, four cycles and it took it two seconds. So four cycles divided by two seconds is two cycles per second. That's the frequency of the wave. Um, eight, what is the period of the wave? And that's referring to the same, uh, the same diagram. What's the period? So here's the way you look at it. Um, it's two cycles per second. So that means to get from zero to two would be one second. To get from two to four would be another one second. So that means that each cycle took a half a second and a half a second. So that would be two cycles in one second or a half a, a, half a second per cycle. To get from here to here, again, that's two more cycles in one second. So there's a half a second, there's a half a second. So the period is a half, one half second. Okay, so the relationship between frequency and period, and this is in the notes, is they're reciprocals of each other. So if the frequency is two seconds, or excuse me, two, um, two hertz or two cycles per second, two hertz is the unit of measure used, then you take the reciprocal one half and that's the period. So the period is one half a second. All right, nine. A wave has a constant speed and frequency. Uh, if a wave has a constant speed and the frequency of the wave increases, how does this affect the frequency of the wave? Um, that was a bad question, wasn't it? Let's try, I'll try this. How would that affect the wavelength of the wave? And the answer is they're inversely related. So if a wave travels at the speed of light, and if all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of, the, of light, and you um, increase the frequency, you've got to decrease the wavelength. The wavelength gets shorter. So because they both have to multiply out to be three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. All right, B, how does it affect the period of the wave? Well, if the frequency increases, the period is going to get lower. Remember the 
period is the reciprocal. So if the frequency goes from say two to 10, then the period is gonna go from the reciprocal of two, which is one half to the reciprocal of 10, which is one tenth. So it's gonna get smaller and smaller. And finally, how does it affect the amplitude of the wave? It doesn't. Frequency and amplitude are completely independent of each other and it does not affect the amplitude of the wave. Okay, let's get going on number 10. And again, you, you go to your uh, notes and the formulas are there and the formulas are also up on the top of the page here. Okay, so an FM radio station has a frequency of 88.9 megahertz. And the, the problem tells you that one megahertz equals 10 to the sixth hertz. So what I want you to do, and you're doing this on line paper, I, I specially formatted this sheet to go ahead and do the solutions, but you should be doing this on line paper. What I want you to do is read the whole problem and identify first what the question's asking for. If you've had me for physics, you know, I was a stickler about doing this and I want you to get used to doing this. What is the wavelength of this radiation in meters? So what the question is asking for is lambda. That's wavelength equals question mark. Lambda equals question mark. Okay, now it gives us the frequency and the frequency is that letter nu that looks kind of like a V and it's going to be 88.9 times 10 to the sixth hertz or cycles per second. A hertz is just a, uh, the unit of measure for cycles per second. All right, so it only gives us one number. So how do we deal with this? Well, there's another number we're dealing with an electromagnetic wave. All these waves will be dealing with are electromagnetic. So we know one thing about it, that its speed is 2.99. I'll use the number on the front of the sheet, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. All right, and so we have a simple formula. Um, the formula is C equals lambda times nu. We're solving for lambda. So I have, I have, I asked my students to come over here and do this, do the algebra off to the right. So we're dividing by nu both sides. Cancel. And you've got lambda equals C over nu. So lambda equals 2.998 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, and that's divided by uh, the frequency, which is 88.9 times 10 to the sixth. And remember Hertz is one over seconds, and this is meters per second. So the seconds in the denominator up here and the seconds in the denominator there are gonna cancel. So you end up with just meters and that's what you want to express your answer in. Um, so you just do the, do the math on this now. So the way you do this is 2.998 divided by 88.9 and that equals 0 0.034, 0 0.034. Now we gotta remember scientific notation. And I'm sorry, that should have been, this should have been to the eighth, sorry. The light, speed of light is 10 to the eighth, and this one is 10 to the sixth. And so do a division with scientific notation with the exponents, you subtract them, the top one minus the bottom. So eight minus six is two. Okay, so what this is, is this is a, this number is 100. So if we multiply this by 100, you can do that on your calculator. Or if you know something about how a decimal works, you move this simply over two places to the right, and that'll make this 10, this will make this number smaller, make it 10 to the zero, and 10 to the zero equals one. So basically the answer comes out to be 3.4 meters. That's your final answer. Again, you can do that on a calculator if what I just said doesn't make sense. You do wanna get comfortable manipulating these decimals and moving them around though, however, okay? Number 11, the US Navy has a system for communicating with submerged submarines. The system uses radio waves. So that is an electromagnetic wave. The key is here, radio waves is an electromagnetic wave, which means it moves at the speed of light, three times 10 to the eight meters per second, with a frequency of 76 Hertz. That's or one over seconds. So let's just go over what are the different measures for frequency. One is just writing out the word cycles per second. That's the same thing as one over seconds, which is the same thing as seconds to the minus one, which is the same thing as Hertz. The most frequent one you generally see is this one, but it's nice to know this one because if you have to cancel units, 
um, you want to know what is the unit you're canceling. You're canceling seconds and the denominator there. Okay, so this is 76, 1 over seconds. So let's go ahead and write that out. They want to know, first of all, the wavelength. So lambda equals question mark. And it says that the system uses a frequency. Frequency, though that's new, our funny new letter here is 76, 1 over S. And finally, the number we always have with electromagnetic waves is this one. Okay, so the, the algebra is the same as the one above. Come over here, do your algebra on the right. And we're solving for wavelength. Divide both sides by nu and you have lambda equals C over nu. <clears throat> so lambda equals, same thing as above. Whoops, let's use the number they're using on the sheet here. Meters per second over 76, no scientific notation here, one over seconds. The S and the denominator here and here cancel, and that leaves you with only meters up on the top. So what do you do when you have scientific notation and non-scientific notation? You just treat this as a coefficient. This is really technically 76 times 10 to the zero power. So that means eight minus zero is gonna be eight anyway. And 10 to the zero power equals one, doesn't equal zero, it equals one. So you're just gonna divide these two and then it's gonna be 10 to the eighth. Uh, so it's 2.88 let me try that again, 2.998 divided by 76, and that gives you 0 0.3, let me try again, 0 0.039 times 10 to the eighth. And it's gonna be in meters. So if you want to adjust this, so this is a number between one and 10, because you really should do that. However, it's a wavelength and wavelengths are expressed in nanometers. That's 10 to the minus ninth. So let me, um, let me come over here and write this. Let me just partition this off. So 0 0.039 times 10 to the eighth. Um, we're just simply going to write this as that's as um, we're going to move the decimal over two places to make it a number between one and 10. So 3.9 is a number between one and 10. So when you moved it over there, you made the number bigger. It went from 0.039 to 3.9. So since you made this number bigger, you have to make this number smaller. So it's times 10 to the sixth. And that is in meters. Okay, so that's your final answer. So sorry to stumble around with that explanation, but yeah, we're just gonna leave the answer like that. So that's a very long wavelength. Why? Radio waves are very, very long waves. They're the longest wavelengths and the lowest frequency type of wave that we will talk about in terms of electromagnetic waves. Okay, let's keep going here. Violet light has a wavelength of about 410 nanometers. What is its frequency? Calculate the energy of one photon of violet light. What is the energy of one mole of violent photons? Okay, they're hitting you with a lot of stuff here. So let's do this. So first of all, I, I won't write down what the question's asking for because it's asking for three things. So let's just start off with what it gives us. So it has a wavelength lambda equals 410 nanometers. That's times 10, to the minus ninth meters. Of course, we know that C equals 2, 0.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. The first thing, it, first thing it's asking is for is frequency. So it's asking us for new equals question mark. So we come over here and we write C equals lambda times new. Come over here, C equals lambda times new. Uh, we're trying to solve for nu, so we're going to divide both sides by lambda. And that's going to give us nu equals C over lambda. Right there, so we come back and plug in the numbers. 2.998 
times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by the wavelength, which is 410. times 10 to the minus ninth meters. And if, you, if you're canceling units, meters here cancels with meters here, and you have one over seconds here that's left over, and that is the, that is the um, unit of measure for, for frequency. Okay, so now we just do the math on this. And it's gonna be 2.998 divided by 410. And that's going to give us this times 10 to the, and I didn't write my eight up here for the speed of light, 10 to the eighth. So eight minus negative nine. Don't try to do that in your head if you're not real sharp with the negative signs. Eight minus negative nine equals, that becomes an eight plus nine equals 17. So it's 10 to the 17th. And it's one over seconds, which we, we're gonna call Hertz. That's the unit of measure for frequency. So that's the answer to part A. Now it says calculate the energy of one photon of violet light. So we go back to our basic formulas. And there's a formula that involves, we, we actually know both the wavelength and the frequency. We could use either one of these formulas. But let's go ahead and use frequency. It's a little simpler. Times Planck's constant gives us E. And E is the energy of one photon. So you got to remember that. That's the energy of one photon. That's what that's giving us. Okay, so I'm going to write that one down here. And uh, it didn't give us A, B, C, but we're going to call this A. And then B down here. I'll do it over here. B equals energy. And I would like you to write that subscript there just to remind yourself what it is the energy of. It's energy of one photon equals Planck's constant. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. So you'll have that number memorized. Joule times seconds. Frequency here, we just figured it out, is going to be is going to be 0 0.0073. And yeah, I probably should have adjusted this decimal to be 7.3. If by making this bigger, I would have made this smaller and it's to the minus, to the positives. It would have been 10 to the 14th. So it been 7.3 times 10 to the 14th to be proper. But I didn't do it, so I'm going to do it. I'll just go ahead with this. Times 10 to the 17th. And that's frequency, so that's 1 over seconds. The seconds here cancels with the seconds here and you end up with joules, which is the unit of measure for energy. So now go ahead and run that on the calculator. So that is going to be 6.62 times 0 0.0073, and that gives us 0. 0 0.048 times 10 to the minus 34 plus 17. If you add 17 to minus 34, you get minus 17. And it's joules. Very small amount of energy. Now, if we are going to correctly place the decimal here, you move it over two places. So 4.8 is a number between 1 and 10. So since we just made this number bigger, we have to offset by making this number two positions smaller. And smaller for a negative exponent is in the negative direction. So it's to the negative 19th negative 19th joules. Okay, now it wants to know what is the energy of one mole of violet photons? Well, we figured out the energy for one photon and in the case of photons, so let's go ahead and take that. Actually, I can just go ahead and work it over here. That's the energy for one photon. I'm gonna multiply that by the conversion factor. What is a mole? It's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's a mole of what? What are we talking about? We're talking about photons here. So a photons over one mole of photons. Okay. And so you're simply going to take this number and multiply it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. 
It's just a matter of getting used to how this dimensional analysis setting up these equations works. So we got 4.8 times 6.0022 equals, and that's going to be 28. I'm going to write it up here because I'm going to rewrite it in just a second. 28.9 times 10 to the, and you add the exponents. So negative 19 plus 23, or 23 minus 19 gives you 4. And that is still an amount of energy, okay? Because um, this photons is going to cancel with um, photons, and you got moles. You got joules per mole of photons. Actually, I shouldn't have canceled that photons. Um, but that's going to be six point zero two three photons for every one mole of photons. Um, so that's going to be um, joules per mole. And now if we want to adjust the decimal properly, it should be 2.89. I move it over one place to the left, so it's 2.89. I just made this number smaller, so I've got to make this number bigger, times 10 to the fifth. Again, if that whole concept is still a little funny to you, come talk to me and let's practice it, okay? Maybe we'll do a couple for warm-ups in class. Okay, there it is. So 2.89 times 10 to the fifth joules of red light from a laser is 175 kilojoules per mole. So what does that mean? It means you've got 175,000 joules of energy for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd photons. That's what that's saying in regular language. Calculate the energy of one photon of red light. What is the wavelength of red light in meters, in nanometers? Compare the energy in, of photons of violet light with those of red light, which is more energetic and by what factor? So unfortunately, there's about five questions wrapped up in here, so I might have to go to the back side of the page. Anyway, let's write down what they give us. And um, we, they give us 175,000 kilojoules per mole. And always write these fractions one over the other. Don't write them slash. Don't get, just get out of that habit. Now, here's the deal. Planck's constant is, cal is um, calibrated in joules, not in kilojoules. So I'm immediately going to convert that to 175,000 joules per mole. Okay. So we need the energy of one photon of light. So I'm going to put E equals question mark. And we know um, calculate the energy of one photon. Okay, so this is the amount of energy of joules per mole. And now what we want to simply do is figure out the joules for a single photon. So we say times one mole of photons for every 6.0 to 2 times 10 to the 23rd photons. Remember, a mole can be of anything. Anything can have a mole, it's just like a dozen, okay? All right, so moles and moles cancels out, and we have joules for one photon. That's what that's telling us. So we do that problem, and we're gonna say 175, divided by 6.022 equals, and it gives me 29,060. Times 10 to the 23rd, and that's joules per photon. But let me go ahead and do my conversion. I want this number to be between one and 10. My decimal is right here after the last digit because you don't see a decimal anywhere else. So it's one, two, three, four. So it's going to be 2.906. You can drop that last zero there. Let me write it down below so I have more space. 2.906 times 10 to the, I had to move the decimal over one, two, three, four positions. So I made this number smaller, so I have to make this number bigger. So that's going to be 10 to the 27th. And that's joules per photon for a single photon.
Okay, so I messed that up. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have 175,000 divided by 6.022. Okay, and that's going to give us 29,060 times 10 to the, now I have a 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. I can bring that up to the top simply by changing the, the exponent to a negative exponent. So it's 10 to the negative 23rd. And that's joules per photon. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust the decimal the way we should. The decimal's right here after the zero. I'm gonna move it over one, two, three, four, because I want the number to be between one and 10. So 2.906 is a number between one and 10 times 10 to the, since I made this number smaller, I've gotta make this number, the negative 23rd up here, bigger by four places. And that's going to move us in the positive direction. So it's 10 to the 19th, negative 19th joules per photon. Okay. All right. Let's keep going on this one. So that was the energy per photon. Um, what is the wavelength of red light in meters? Okay. So, um, so we have a formula that says, E equals H C over wavelength. Um, I'm going to assume you know how to do the algebra to solve for this, but I'm going to just do it for you by magic here. It's wavelength equals, if you don't know how to do this, come in and tell me and let's practice it. It's going to be H C over E. Simply multiply both sides by lambda and divide both sides by E. And that solves it for lambda. Okay, so what do we have for that? Well, we have this, we have 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. I'm not gonna put units of measure on because it's getting too cluttered here. Okay, speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth. And that's all gonna be over the energy that we just fa figured out for a single photon, which is uh, 2.906 times 10 to the minus 19th. And what am I solving for? I'm solving for a wavelength, so I know it's gonna be in meters. All right, and if I do all that, so it's 6.62, be sure you're comfortable doing these calculations with scientific notation. 6.62 times, I said times three, but I'm gonna use the number they've been giving us, 2.998 divided by 2.998. 906 and that's going to give me 6.83 so 6.83 times 10 and what do you do with the exponents okay there's a lot to go going on here negative 34 plus 8 is negative 26 now I have a negative 19 on the bottom so it's negative 26 minus negative 19 that's going to be plus 19, negative 26 plus 18. Negative 26 plus 19, that's going to give us 10 to the negative 7. And that's in meters. Okay. Um, now, what we want to do oftentimes is, um, and I'm going to go to another piece of paper here. We want to be in nanometers for wavelengths of light, okay? So, what that's going to be is, if you move the decimal over two places to the right, you've made this bigger. You've made 6.83 bigger. You've made it 683. So you're gonna make this number two places smaller. So that's gonna be 10 to the minus nine. And that's in meters. 
that is a nanometer. 10 to the minus 9 is a nanometer. So what I was shooting for, if you're wondering why I was doing this, I'm shooting to get this to be 10 to the minus 9 because that is a nanometer. Just understand that. Wavelengths of light are expressed in nanometers. So it's 683. The final answer is it could be that, but it's 683 nanometers. That's a billionth of a meter. Okay, so there's your answer. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to keep this piece of paper right here. What else does it ask us? It said, what is the wavelength of red light in meters? Well, it said in meters and then in nanometers. So we gave it to them both ways. There it is in meters. There it is in nanometers. Then compare the energy of photons of violet light with those of red light, which is more energetic. So the violet light was the previous question, question 12. Okay, so question 12, um, we got a, an energy of a photon of violet light to be 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19th. Let me get my paper back here. So let me, I'm sorry, let me just check that again. Yeah, a photon is uh, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. So for violet, one photon equals 4.8 times 10 to the minus, whatever I just said, uh, minus 19th joules. Okay, and for a photon of um, red light, we got up here, we got 2.9 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. So both of them are minus 19th, 10 to the minus 19th, but you can see 4.8 is greater than 2.9. So the violet light is more energetic. It has a higher frequency and therefore it has more energy. Red has a lower frequency and therefore it has less energy. So that is the answer to that question. By what factor? Oh boy, uh, I don't know. Not quite two to one. Uh, but it's just about, it's just about, I don't know. It's not quite two to one. That's all I would say. But well, let's just do a division problem. 4.8, you can forget the minus 19 because they cancel out. So 4.8 over 2.9 equals, and just do that. And that'll tell you the factor. And it gives you 1.66 times. And there's no unit of measure. It's just that many times K okay, greater. That's violet. Violet is 1.66 times greater or more energetic. All right, let's keep going. So now we're down to number 14. Uh, this is more of a concept question. The most prominent line in the spectrum of neon is found at 865.438 nanometers. Other lines are found at, and you can read all those numbers for yourself. Which of these lines represents the most energetic? Okay, so these are all wavelengths. They're in, they're in nanometers. So just write down this concept. Um, the most energetic, which is the highest energy, has the highest frequency and therefore the shortest or least lowest number, but let's just say shortest wavelength. So all we have to do is find which one of these numbers is the least, 837, 78, 78, 1800. So this one is 
um, the least energetic of all of those numbers that you see up there. So that with this one. So 837.761 is the shortest. Ah, I take that back. Yeah. No, that's right. Read the question wrong. Okay. Uh, which of the line read the most energetic? Yeah, so it's the shortest wavelength, so that's right. Is this is the most energetic. I read it right and then I read it wrong again. And that's your answer. So you didn't really have to do a calculation. You have to understand that concept. And I should put units of measure in nanometers. Okay, finally, what is the frequency of the most prominent line? Okay, so the most prominent line is this one up here. They gave you at the beginning. What is the frequency of that? And what is the energy of one photon of this wavelength? So first let's do frequency. So they're asking you for frequency. Um, the wavelength of that most prominent line equals, and learn how to convert this into scientific notation, 865.438 nanometers, which means times 10 to the minus ninth meters. And of course, the other number we always have to work with is this one, the speed of light. Okay, so our formula, I know they give them to you on the front of the page, but you should know how to do the algebra on these. <clears throat> okay, C equals lambda nu, divide both sides. You're looking for nu, divide both sides by lambda, cancel, and you end up with nu equals C over lambda. I'm just going to write it over here. I'm kind of taking a shortcut. I usually like to do the algebra off to the side and do it separately. So it's 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. You divide that by this wavelength, which is 865.438 times 10 to the minus ninth. And that's meters. So meters cancels with meters. You end up with one over seconds right there, which is Hertz, which is the unit for frequency. So now you just do the math. <sighs> okay, and what I get for that is new equals 0.0034. .00 four, six times 10 to the eight minus negative nine. Write these out if you're not really swift with negative signs. Eight minus negative nine is eight plus nine. So that's 10 to the 17th hertz. And if we're gonna adjust the decimal, we move it to make a, this a number between one and 10. So it's one, two, three positions. So that number becomes 3.46. That's a number between one and 10. We made this number bigger, so we have to make this number smaller. So it's going to be times 10 to the 14th. You go down three positions. You went up three positions here, down three positions. Remember, we want the value of the number to remain the same. Okay, and that's Hertz, okay? So there's that answer. And then finally it asks, what is the energy of one photon at that wavelength? Well, it's easier to use the frequency equation. It's energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So that's going to be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And that's going to be times this frequency right here. 3.46 times 10 to the 14th hertz, which is 1 over seconds. Seconds cancels with seconds on the bottom and you end up with just joules, which is the unit for energy. And now you just do the math. Okay, it's slipping all over the place on me here. Let's get this uh, there. All right. Okay, so we got 6.626 times 10 to the 14th. 
times um, uh, 3.46, that's going to give us 22.9 times 10 to the negative 34 plus 14, that's going to get you to negative 20 joules. And if we just the decimal, that's single position over, so it's 2.29. You're going to, you made this number smaller, so you got to make this number bigger. A negative number is going to go in the positive direction if it gets bigger. So it's times 10 to the minus 19th, that's joules, and that's your final answer. So that's the energy in one photon at that particular wavelength. Okay, these are a lot of plug and chug, but they're still a little tricky, okay? A lot of scientific notations, some funny you've never seen before, some strange equations. Just practice them. You'll get better. We're going to do another set tomorrow that are going to be somewhat similar to this and add a, add a few equations to it as well. So I'll see you um, in class tomorrow. And, um, yep, see you in class tomorrow.